We are here at the Emory James Museum with Mrs. Sheila Lowbrell, a distinguished um, old girl of St. Andre High School. Um, she is founder and executive artistic director of the Aero Youth Foundation. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. I saw on your CV that you went to another high school before you came to yes, St. Andrew. Can you give us the circumstances of that? Yes. Um, when my there are three sisters, well, there are five of us in the family. Mm -hmm. Two boys, three girls, I'm the last. Um, my, my older sister and I, for some reason that I perceive, but was never told, because children are never told these things, we were sent off to boarding school in the country when I was six and she was nine. What? Well, early. Um, I think it was because both my parents were working. And the older siblings were all doing, you know, important things, going to college and that sort of thing. And so it meant that Beverly and I were sort of at home and mommy was not at home. And I think they just felt we needed to be in a more um, cons constructed, what am I, structured, in a more, in a more structured. Anyway, so I went to get friends and she went to send me and I, and I left St. Hilda's, I left the person went to St. Hilda's and I actually ended up being the youngest child in the high school when I was eight, which was really, really bad because I think it scarred me for life. <laughs> because I was just younger than everybody in the whole yeah. school. And St. Hilda's was a kind of semi on situation where 90% of the time you were supposed to be silent and eight, that's a hard concept to internalize. <laughs> And I was always in trouble, always in trouble. And eventually, I think, you know, after a while they just decided the thing wasn't working out. And they dragged us back to Kingston. And At what stage did you want to I came to St. Andrew when I was 10. Okay. And, um, yeah, I stayed here until I did senior. When you were 10, would that have put you in the prep school or in the high school? In the high school. In the high school. So you joined a class that most likely had people older than you? Then. Yes. Okay. So that was to be your fate? That was my fate. And I said, that, well, I'm not sure that it was a good fate or a bad fate because I don't think it would have made much difference. But what I know for certain is that I was never in the rank of the distinguished siblings that had preceded me. <laughs> was that your effort? Or <laughs> Did you rebel? Or? I, I I can't explain it, but I what I do know is that I I was an artist. Yes. And I say that in the very, very broadest sense of the word, because even when I was at Hillcrest, my mother kept all my letters home. And all of them were richly illustrated and descriptive of nature and the flowers and all this kind of thing, whereas Beverly who became an accountant, hers were the exact opposite. You know, she would write and say that um, you know, she had given out five blouses, four um, skirts and three ties to the laundry yeah. and two <laughs> came back kind of thing. Um, and I loved drama. I was a part of the drama club. Mm -hmm. I loved languages. I loved all that. When I came to St. Andrew, I had a best friend who lived across the road. Um, and we were best friends simply because when, when I was really little, we had lived across the road. We had lived on Stratton Avenue. Okay. And so we were reunited, this best friend and I, Sandy Elmer. I, I think um, it was a great thing and it was a difficult thing because we really got up to a lot of hijinks. Okay, give us some, give, give me an idea of what, how you felt about St. Andrew High School, what it allowed you to do, some of the things that you did yeah. that weren't so right. I was not a good student. Although so what do you mean by you weren't a good student? I wasn't studious. Okay. I didn't like studying. And um, I was endowed and happily with my father's, my father's DNA. Which he, he was a very bright man. <laughs> And so I used to do well in spite of myself. Uh, and so it annoyed all the teachers intensely. <laughs> I 
because they felt that I was just, you know, wasting time. And they were right, you know, I really was. Um, I think because of my temperament and because, you know, of my interest in my in the arts, I was I wasn't engaged. I wasn't challenged by what was happening at school. It wasn't for me, yeah. Um, and so I didn't I didn't throw myself into it, and it didn't matter to me. The other thing about being the last in a family of people who are high achievers is that by the time they get around to you, nobody really worries too much because everybody else has taken care of the family honor. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and so you can just sort of be yourself. Yeah. Um, which which was also a kind of freedom. But some of the I mean I mean some of the worst things that I got up to with my with my friend was I I can remember very well. That he used to drop us at the bottom of the road and I would walk up to school, walk past school, go to Sandy's house. In my school bag was a change of clothes. And off the two of us would go to the circus because there was a circus from that came out from York that was at Hebrews Park. Mm -hmm. So we'd spend the whole day at the circus and then I'd go back to her, put on back the school uniform, and go home like a good girl. It didn't want any worse than at the bus stop in Crossroads when Daddy drove back. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that, was, that was really, I, I never really became engaged. I um, had a lot of friends. It was, in friends? Yes, very much so. And it was fun, you know, it was, it was fun. I frustrated the teachers. I, for example, Miss Stockhausen mm -hmm. and I actually came to an agreement because she was so sick of the stories I came with about why I hadn't done the homework. I remember I was in the choir because I was tall, I was always in the back row. And the hymn book was the same color as the Shakespeare book. So that was when I did my Shakespeare homework during the choir. I'd be in the back of the room with singing away, but using um, the words of Shakespeare to the music. And then English was the first class right after, after prayers. prayers. And I distinctly remember one morning she said to me, I went to her with another reason why I hadn't done the homework. And she just looked at me and she said, No, we need to talk to her, mm -hmm. like that. Yes. She said, Let us just come to an understanding. I am, you are not going to do the homework. And I am not going to ask you for it. <laughs> I like so that. I thought, oh, great. So I never did any <laughs> more. 